Filmmakers from around the world came to Tribeca this year with their full-length features and each was given a proper premiere. What's it like as a director to come to Tribeca and to spend a few days in New York with your film? Well, to find out, we followed filmmaker PJ Raval, who was in town with his documentary. So I've definitely overpacked. I'm at the airport and Kyle, the Filipino lift driver, has been excellent. All right. Oh. <laughs> so my name is PJ Raval and I'm a filmmaker from Austin, Texas, and I'm here in New York City to premiere my film at the Tribeca Film Festival. Here we are, walking in New York. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cold. Uh, my film is called Call Her Ganda, which is a feature-length documentary about the events that surrounded uh, Jennifer Laude, who was a trans woman in the Philippines who was discovered dead in a motel room in Alangapo City, with the leading suspect being a U.S. Uh, Marine. And the story caught a lot of attention when people realized that the Filipino authorities are not allowed to detain him or try him without the permission of the United States. Um, and this is all under an agreement called the Visiting Forces Agreement. Um, it's quite an honor to be screening the film here. I mean, Tribeca is known as one of the best film festivals in the world. Um, you know, known for having some of the most amazing audiences. So I'm really excited. You know, I've been working here in the United States. A lot of the subjects are in the Philippines. Um, you know, the producers are all over the place. So it'll be great to reconnect with everyone um, and celebrate our accomplishment. Hey, I'm getting ready to leave for the world premiere of Call Her Gunda. You can see behind me, there's my jacket for the evening, very important. And on this side, if you want to know what a world premiere looks like, you can see that I've handwritten some notes on who to thank because this is a moment that I definitely do not want to mess up. Here we go. <laughs> Here we are on the red carpet. And that's Virgie Suarez who came all the way from the Philippines. Yeah, the response to the film has been amazing. The Q&As have been really great. Um, you know, the subjects are very happy with it. You know, some people in the audience, even some of our subjects have gotten very teary-eyed. You know, so yeah, I think it's touched people in a lot of different ways. Who would have thought that a transgender case would bring in issues that are a lot larger than just a transgender case? And I love that it was framed as like a neo-colonial, imperial type of story. I love how this is in like Tribeca, which is like <laughs> yeah, it's super famous. We're also interested in not only screening the film and premiering the film, but really thinking about what the potential impact of the film could be. So on Monday, we had what's called a brain trust, which is one way to think of it is it's almost a collective brainstorming. Um, and we invited uh, several different activists and organizers, thought leaders, to get everyone into the room um, and collectively brainstorm on how can, this how can this film be used for something concrete? Like, can it change legislation? Can it create um, new organizations? <laughs> And what was really cool is we did one here in New York, but then we also did one simultaneously in Manila. And then also through video Skyping, we had a couple people in from Los Angeles and DC. The film has its own life, it's its own entity. And so I feel like the brain trust was seeing it take its first steps, if that makes any sense. Like it walked away from me, <laughs> you know? And already just getting everyone into the room was already creating some kind of change. It's been an amazing past few days, and the screenings have gone better than I could have expected. The Brain Trust was amazing. I'll see you again. Bye.